Good evening, everybody. You are welcome to the Midweek Faith Boost. And it is so good to be in this season where we're thinking, meditating on our Savior, Jesus Christ, as we're celebrating the birth of our Lord and Savior. We continue celebrating and looking forward to the new year. I know that for most of us, it's, it's a time that we actually make those uh, resolutions and it's when we just kind of gather our thoughts and really reflect on the goodness of God and just looking at life and some realities do come vividly during this time. But even in this time, we need to get our faith boosted and it's a wonderful thing to be able to access the Word of God. Uh, of course, you can read on your own, but it's always good to hear somebody else speak the Word of God just to give a different perspective. So. Here it is, Midweek Faith Boost, and my name is Pastor Moffat. I'm part of the team here at Miracle Life Family Church. If you are joining us for the very first time, please invite somebody. Let us know also in the comment section. Comment there to say, I am a, a first-time guest, and we would like to chat to you, uh, chat back to you, and get to know you a little bit more. And uh, whatever questions you may have, please type in the chat section whether it's on Facebook or YouTube, that you're connecting with us here on Midweek Faith Boost. So today we are talking about embracing joy in the now. Embracing joy in the present time. Embracing joy in the situation that you're in right now. That is very, very important because... When we talk about embracing, we are talking about something that we decide to do. And we're going to read um, Philippians chapter 4. Philippians chapter 4, verse 4, going downwards, it reads, Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say, rejoice. Then verse 5 says, Let your reasonableness be known to everyone. And I'll leave it just there for now. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say rejoice. This is Paul talking to the Philippians. And he's giving them an imperative. Now, when an imperative is given, a command is given, it means this is not negotiable. This is a serious thing and it must be uh, uh, responded to accordingly. So he's saying rejoice in the Lord always. He's actually saying let this be your disposition. Let it, let, let it be the mood, the, the perpetual mood in which you are. But then he's putting a demand on our attention and he's saying rejoice in the Lord always. And then he emphasizes it and says again I say rejoice because your joy is important. Your joy is a big deal to the Lord. Jesus paid dearly for your joy. But then you might argue, you might object and say, hey, but I've got issues, I've got things that haven't worked out the way that I had planned or that I had expected. My expectations were not met. Why should I rejoice? As believers, we are being called to rejoice. And we imitate our God when we do this. And I'll, I'll show you why I'm saying that. Just have a look at Genesis chapter 1. Chapter 1, when uh, we, we won't read the whole thing. I'm just referencing it just to kind of drive this point home. You know, when God was creating the heavens and the earth, in the very beginning, he did something interesting. He said, let there be light. Boom. There was light. And then the Bible says here in Genesis chapter 1, verse um, uh this is verse 3. Yeah, let me read from verse, verse 3. And God said, let there be light. And there was light. Verse 4 says, and God saw that the light was good. And God separated the light from the darkness. Now, just that little phrase right there. He created the light. And he said, he stepped back and looked at the light and he saw that it was good. I know this is a narrative, but I'm, I, I, please indulge me as I use my creative imagination. 
This is just one thing that has been accomplished, and yet God paused and looked at what has been accomplished. And he looked at it, and it took time to just enjoy it. And he saw that the light was good. There's no vegetation. Things are still mixed up. There are no animals, no living creatures. There's still formlessness. The only thing that has come to be is just the light that has dispelled the darkness that was hovering over the surface of the deep. And God still enjoyed it. He created, he did the next thing. And he said, let's, let's read verse 9. says, God said, let the waters under the heavens be gathered together into one place. Let the dry land appear. And it was so. And God called the dry land earth and the waters were, that were gathered together. Uh, he called seas. And then says, and God saw that it was good. Again, he hasn't accomplished everything. Because remember, it's a, we believe in a six-day creation. He hasn't even created the man. Everything hasn't formed together. And yet God just posed that, looked at what was accomplished, and he just enjoyed it. When you look at all of the things that have happened throughout this year, can you just begin to look at what God has done? What good has happened because human beings, we have the tendency to let the, the negative stuff supersede all of the good. And we forget about celebrating, you know, the goodness of God in the areas where we saw his mighty hand, where we saw him doing great and mighty things. And we forget all of that because of something negative that has happened that has overshadowed everything. It has blocked us from seeing the hand of God in, in, in our lives. But that's, that should not be our attitude. That's why Paul is saying, rejoice in the Lord always. Let this be your bias. Let this be something that, that, that it should be your leaning all the time. It doesn't mean that we ignore all of the negative stuff that needs to be dealt with. We need to deal with stuff, especially that which is within our, our power to, to, to solve. We need to really, really do our best with the help of God to remove those obstacles and to just remove anything that causes displeasure. So, yes, we need to be responsible, but in our responsibility, let us remember to celebrate the good things. Let us remember, God didn't wait till the seventh day for him to see the good that had been accomplished. Things may not be working out perfectly for you, but God has been good. Look at those things and celebrate those things and say, wow, God, you've done it. And make it your, your heart desire to have this disposition of joy. It's a choice. And you know how things work when it comes to the things of God. Faith before understanding the situation. It doesn't mean you are burying your head in the sand. It just means that you are choosing the more excellent way, which is to see things from God's perspective. As far as God is concerned, he's already seen everything. And in the end, his purpose wins. And if his purpose is winning, it means that you are with him and he's on top of everything. And you are seated at the right hand of the Father and you are triumphing together with him. And that perspective informs your attitude and your disposition. Because the, the only way things are going to end up the only conclusion to the matter is that God wins. His purpose wins. And if you are in his purpose, it means that you will be filled with joy because you know how the story ends. So my encouragement to you is to look at God's accomplishments. The things that you've been able to say, yes, I, I managed to do that by the grace of God. Celebrate those things. Things may not be perfect, maybe in your family, in your relationship, or maybe on your job you didn't get the promotion that you were believing God for, or maybe you worked so hard but little has been accomplished. Look at the little that has been accomplished and choose joy. Choices lead, feelings follow the choices. And they conform, and then that informs your disposition. And then 
you keep looking to God and keep trusting Him. Are you, uh, am I being dismissive of the gravity or the seriousness of the displeasure? No, no, no. I am trying to obey God's command through Paul who said rejoice. And he, and he, he emphasizes and says, again, I will say rejoice. Let this be your disposition. And then he says uh, in verse 5, he says, let your reasonableness be known to everyone. There's a social dimension to this. There's a horizontal dimension. It's important that people see you joyful. Your reasonableness is informed. You, have, you are reasonable because you have joy in your heart. And Paul is encouraging, is exhorting the Philippians to say, let your reasonableness be known. It should be seen. Because it does impact people when they can see that you are overflowing with joy. They want what you have. Are you pretending? No. You are living in faith. And then he, he further makes this uh, prescription. As I Let me just go on reading. Uh, um, my target is verse 8, Philippians 4 verse 8. But I, I'm going to read ahead here. Um, uh, verse 6, he says, Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. Verse 7 says, And the peace of God which surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Verse 8, now, the prescription. It says, Finally, brothers, whatever is just... Whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence, if there is any worthy, anything worthy of praise, think about these things. Remember, this is a context of joy. He's giving that imperative and he's now kind of teasing out what will cause that joy to go on or for you to continue being joyful. It's, it's a, there's a mindset that he's prescribing here and he says, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is commendable, whatever is lovely, all of these are things that, you know, if they fill your heart, are going to make it possible for you to have that bias, that leaning towards being joyful. And you will overflow with joy because you are deliberately thinking on these things. That's how joy works. We choose it, then it fills our hearts. There's so much negativity in life. There are so many things that you can focus on that will drive you down the path of depression. But we have to make a conscious choice. And that's why Paul is emphasizing again, I say rejoice. This is a big deal. This is something serious. You have to take this seriously. God wants us joyful. And we are joyful because we are making a choice to be joyful. And then we are taking this prescription, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable. If there is any excellence, if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. That is what keeps your joy overflowing. And it affects not only you, it affects others as well. Because your reasonableness needs to be seen by all. This is my encouragement. As you enter the new year, let this be your disposition. This is the word of God through the Apostle Paul. As he was speaking, inspired by God, he says, rejoice always without exception. And again, he emphasizes it, says, rejoice and let your reasonableness be known. Let it be seen. Let it be visible to everyone around because that too is a testimony. I encourage you to embrace the joy, especially in this time that we're thinking about the birth of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Your joy matters to God. Your joy matters here in the community as we live together as people of God. It's a testimony to everyone and let your reasonableness your disposition of joy be observed by all. Let them see that there is a God who is living in there. That there is a God who has helped you. Even when they might know something negative that has happened to you. 
let them see that you still have the joy of the Lord, which is your strength. Child of God, this is possible. This is your portion. And rejoice in the Lord always. And like Paul, I say with him, again, I say rejoice. That is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Seasons greetings to you. And I leave you with these words. Rejoice in the Lord always. And have a great time. Enjoy with family. And let God's richest blessings flow your way in this festive season. God richly bless you. So glad you were part of this Faith Boost broadcast. What we'd ask you to do is go to YouTube and subscribe to the Miracle Life channel. On Facebook, like the Miracle Life Facebook page. That way you'll receive notification when there's new content. We've got content like this that's regularly coming out to bless you, to help you. Also notifications that will help you in your walk with God, what's happening at the church and things like that. And with notifications, it actually gets pushed to you and it's a great way to be reminded. So go to the YouTube channel, subscribe, and go to the Facebook page and like it. God bless you.